Hi there USBGF Facebook friends. What we're looking at is a part of a lesson <clears throat> by Jake Jacobs that he has posted on my site, the uh, mindgamecenter.com, uh, which is a site where you can go and purchase lessons for as little as 99 cents up to 3.99 on virtually every subject that you can imagine in backgammon. Lessons are given by Bill Roberti, Kit Woolsey, uh, Matt Cohn Geyer, Falafel, uh, Jake, myself, Perry Gartner, and others. <clears throat> and they're very educational. Uh, you can view them in the form of either uh, a, a quiz or you can view them as flashcards so that the ones you get wrong will repeat more often and you'll learn them better. And it's divided into lessons for beginners, intermediate, and advanced players. So whatever your level of play, you're going to find something you'll like. Well, Jake, as many of you know, is one of the best players in the world, has been on the Giants list for a long time. And a while back, he wrote a great book called Can a Fish Taste Twice as Good with Walter Trice. And the basic idea of that book is to explain how you should change your game when you're playing someone who's uh, better or worse than you, uh, or whether you should change it at all. There's sometimes where there, there's certain kinds of plays where you shouldn't change them at all. And it's the definitive book on the subject. And uh, <clears throat> he's taken some of the more interesting concepts and put them into this lesson. I think this lesson is $2.99. What a bargain to be able to know how to vary your game. As you know, if you use Extreme Gammon or if you're in the Dark Ages and still using Snowy or Gnu or something else, you'll see that when you get an answer on what the right play is, it's always telling you on the assumption that both players are equal and that both players will play perfectly. Well, that's a good starting point, but in real life, we know that nobody plays perfectly, and uh, we know that the players are rarely equal. If you're fairly close to equal, though, you should try to make the correct play to the best of your knowledge. But if you're considerably better or worse than your opponent, it really does make sense to vary your game. There are times you should double when it's not a double. There's times you should drop when you shouldn't drop against a better or equal player. And you should even vary your checker plays. So Jake does a great job of explaining the basic concepts. Uh, in this position, a white is on roll. He's doubling. Uh, the score is 0, 0 to 11, or 11 away, 11 away. Uh, the pip count uh, is white has 86 pips and black has 96 pips. And if you're black and you are confident that you are the stronger player, should you take or pass? Now, of course, uh, I'm going to tell you this is certainly a take, uh, according if you're equal players. But if he's really much of a stronger player, it is a pass, according to Jake. Pass is correct. And Jake, when you click on the answer, <coughs> he'll tell you if you got it right or wrong. Look at this. I've got the first three correct so far. I'm doing good. Of course, I've helped edit this and worked at it for quite a bit, but it really has helped me learn about this myself. Unfortunately, uh, while Jake may have a lot of experience playing players who are a lot worse than him, I don't have as much experience, but I've got a lot more experience than Jake in playing people who are better than me. Maybe I should write a book on how to play when you're playing people who are better. <clears throat> but he explains why with so little equity and uh, you're in a totally non-skill position or almost completely non-skill position. Uh, why let your opponent have two points instead of one? If you're clearly the better player and he justifies it with math and can prove that you're better off taking, I'm sorry, dropping, even though Extreme Gammon will tell you it's an 8% error to pass. So I think it's a very good lesson. You need to think this way. You need to keep this in mind. Of course, you need to have a, a good idea of what the right play is. You need to have a good assessment and a realistic assessment of your skills and your opponent's skills. And I must caution you, only apply this kind of thinking if you're absolutely sure your opponent is worse than you or absolutely sure that you're much better than he is. And even then, uh, you shouldn't be normally be making blunders like this. It's probably wrong much of the time. But there are situations where it is right to vary your game drastically based on skill level. And um, even at equal skill levels, if the composition is very, very complicated for your opponent to play and fairly simple for you to play, that's more reason for you to double or that's more reason to take if you get doubled. So those kinds of factors are very important. Jake will teach you that well. For more lessons like this and to look at it, you can go to www.mindgamecenter.com. 
tell them Phil sent you and uh, you won't get a penny off. Uh, thanks for watching and thanks for watching all our videos and supporting the USBGF. Bye-bye.